James from Build Tune Race here and we're back with another video on the burnout truck. So I'm going to start wiring, got a few last things to place on the truck, get everything kind of in place and then I'm going to start wiring everything. So I'm going to go ahead and wire the truck, the starter, the ignition switch, a panel, You've got to do the whole terminator system, plug everything in there and then give it power and all of that. So that is what this video is going to be about. It'll probably take me a few days. It's Friday night right now. I'll probably go through the weekend on wiring this truck, just making sure I'm going to build a relay panel and a ignition panel for this truck uh, and wire everything separate so it is all standalone and then hopefully like the headlights the tail lights and all that stuff work with the factory harness so i got a few more parts in going and show you those now ended up getting this really awesome wilson manifold throttle body it's all billet super super nice piece so i got that in and then i also ordered the bracket for a 4150 style throttle body that hooks onto the factory throttle cable if I can find it. So I got it set up to where it's gonna work with the stock throttle cable, pretty nice, and I don't have to mess with a lot. Gonna have a little bit of a loop here, but it is what it is. And then I got went to the parts store, grabbed a gasket for this thing, and gonna get this all mounted. And I got a starter with some uh, post, terminal post for the excess battery that I'm gonna be running. I got all of that. I got some power and ground wires. I still need to get a power wire for the alternator, which I'll work on that here in a little bit anyway. And then here is the Holly all out of the box. I got the Terminator X, the ignition harness, O2 sensor, power wires that go to the battery, input output harness. And then I went ahead and ordered this stuff separate. I got two relays here and this power post. So I'll come from the battery to this and then I can distribute power out to things in the truck as needed. And then I went ahead and got this key deal that you can get in any O'Reilly or AutoZone since the truck doesn't have one anymore because of the race column. So I'll probably just mount that like in the dash and then a couple switches. Uh, I plan on using the input output harness on the Holly to control probably all the fans and the trans cooler. I thought about just wiring it to where they're on all the time, but no real sense. If we can use the Terminator, I might as well use it and then I can show you guys kind of how to do some of that. The Terminator also has a built-in map sensor, so I'm going to go ahead and probably use that just to try it. It's an NA deal, and this sensor will work. And then I have a few other relays left over from the Mazda build. going to go ahead and use those up on this project. And that's pretty much the Holly. The puzzle that will need to be mounted in the truck is a little 3.5 inch display that you can tune off of. I'm probably going to end up ordering the uh, little adapter cable. Well, I know I will. That converts it over to being able to use the whole um, computer and the whole program for tuning it. But I will probably try to do the initial fire up on this to show you guys how you can do it as well. So that's pretty much where we're at. Alex came by. He's going to help me get the throttle body on. We're going to try to get some stuff sealed up, start plugging in wires, and then move our way into the truck. And then I'll start running wires into the truck and all of that. And then just kind of wire the truck as I go. And then I'll need to wire some of the stuff back here into the truck. So I'll need to run some length. I bought a bunch of wire from the store the other day. So I knew I was going to be wiring some stuff so I got that right here uh, I just went ahead and bought like a whole bunch of power wire ground wire a light bulb that I'll show you guys later that's for hooking up like the alternator when you're doing something like this and then one of these little distribution blocks where you can kind of daisy chain this and then feed off whatever you need off of this I might need it I might not and then uh yeah so got everything here got a whole bunch of parts I'm gonna get like the starter installed get this thing installed man I like it. I think that looks sweet. I don't know about that big old. So this is the Edelbrock gasket. It's kind of like a spacer too that helps not direct so much heat into the throttle body. I guess it looks like it works okay. I'll open the throttle blades and make sure that have to it looks it like here, it clears here. here too. Oh, it's already hitting over there. Yeah, so we got two little nubs that hit the gasket right here. If I decide to make this work, then I guess this is what you use. I don't, I don't know. It's not like a normal paper gasket, but I guess this is considered a gasket. So. That's um, what it says on the box. That's what it says, so we'll, we'll see. But I see what you're saying. It's starting to hit down here, so might have to clearance a little bit of it. The throttle will open and close all the way. At first, it would hit like right here, and then it started rubbing on the back side, and now it clears all the way around there. So we're going to go ahead and get this on there, and tighten down. It'll be good. But you want to do the honors? Show the people the throttle opening and closing. All the awesome work that we did. All the way. Check it. Yep. All the way. Shut it. There it is. All the way. Oh yeah. So 
that's good. Now we'll probably go ahead and start plugging in a lot of this stuff. This is all the Holly EFI stuff, so crank will go down below. Uh, even ignition will plug in here. And then, so we'll just have to kind of work everything out. Um, idle air control, intake air temp. TPS. So that's what's nice about this uh, Wilson is everything was set up to just plug right in to the harness using like LS style sensors here. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the harness. Everything's labeled real nice. Uh, knock sensors we won't be using. Ground to the head. And then I also cam, which will be in the back. Oil pressure is in the back. So these go to the back. So we'll suck this in a little bit more. And then also going to go ahead and start wiring up the battery. I got these little posts here. I'm gonna actually, uh, when I first did the Camaro, Holly suggested going to two separate posts, separate from where everything else ties to, uh, but you have to, now it just says directly to the batteries, but I'm still gonna go ahead and separate them. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the Holly power and ground off of this harness here to it. So that stuff will run inside, go to the ECU. We gotta get, find a good spot to mount it up in there, and then that'll come out to here. And then I have a big power wire I've already kind of ran into the truck. I think I have a two gauge here, ran it down, up, and into the firewall there, and into the truck, which will go to that little um, distribution block I talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and get some ends on. I went ahead and picked up some ends here. I'm going to go ahead and take these. I don't have the nice little crimper machine, so I'm just going to go ahead and solder them. It's the same thing I think I've done on the Camaro and on Clyde. So get those soldered and get some wiring connections started here. And then also all the injectors are in, those 80 pounders which the injector harness is separate. I went ahead and ordered the correct one. This is an EV1 harness. So then these EV1s plug right on to here. So this will plug into where it says injectors, which is probably that one, possibly. Yep, that is the injector. So that'll plug into there and then give us all of our injector wiring. So we we'll go ahead and get all those hooked up. I almost wonder if I should have swung these and went to the inside but I guess if you're working on them it makes it easier if they're on the outside but probably cleaner if they're on the inside but we'll go ahead and get this all hooked up uh just run it all I think Alex has the what do you got you got CTS cooler Matt. temp sensor which will be here um TPS fuel fuel pressure eventually I'll end up getting a fuel pressure sensor that goes in here one of them 100 psi sensors it screws right into there plug it in I might get a little tight with these hoses now I see. Intake idle air control, so that plugs in clear back here. That'll be so we got some little route and kind of clean up, tuck the harness back a little bit, and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then this actually goes to the other side. This is the wide band harness that Alex already screwed the wide band sensor into this pipe here. So those two will go together there. Uh, so that kind of gives you guys a general idea of kind of where we're going to run everything. It'll look a whole lot better. We're just going to start plugging everything in. So here is one of the power wires we're going to reuse actually off the S10. I'm going to use this one to go to the starter. So it already has a fitting on this end. And then I'm going to go ahead and solder this in. So I kind of just set it right here, heat this up, can solder down in there. Once it's done, I'll end up kind of clipping it. I think I've used vice grips before. Uh, having a nice vice like this, we can probably take the vice and squeeze it more towards the top. So you have more fluid of uh, solder down in the bottom, so then it, once it all solidifies, it can't pull out of this connector here. So Alex goes, how's that gonna work? Um, on the Camaro, the wideband plugs right in, but the Terminator runs a different style wideband sensor, which they're not methanol friendly. So I hope I can still run this on methanol and it'll live. If not, I'm gonna have to figure something out, but I wanted to run a Terminator, I guess on either okay, but methanol, but I'm gonna try it. If I kill a sensor, I kill a sensor. But trying to figure it out, this is what that little adapter that was in the box is for. So that will plug into there. So it must just be, um, if you want to run like an NTK sensor, which I wonder, I don't know if you can on the Terminator run an NTK sensor, but this must be the different Bosch style. So it adapts the new Bosch style O2 sensor to the normal O2 sensor plug on the Holland. Two wire to go to the back of the truck here, but we'll get some sucked back into the truck and eat up a lot of this, but with that adapter, all that. But it's kind of cool. I mean, it shows that if you ended up having like a bullhorn clear out here on like a turbo car or whatever, uh, you'd have enough routing to run it up and around. I mean, on the Camaro, my O2 sensor's clear up in this front corner, 
so it has to come out of the dash around and clear over to this front corner so it's nice having some extra cord until you don't need the extra cord then you gotta you gotta hide it somewhere so that is what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and suck that back into the truck and uh, as well as as much of the other wires that we can once we get everything plugged in kind of tighten it up to the truck on the firewall so we got a good chunk of it plugged in here ended up going ahead and starting in the back we plugged the injector harness in got all the injectors ran probably just zip tie this back here kind of keeps a little bit cleaner uh, Kind of end up with a little bit of a mess here, but you got the crank sensor that goes down to the crank sensor that's behind the starter. Uh, not using knock sensors. This is the map sensor that like, you can have one mounted up here or whatever. Uh, if you ran like a big GM3 bar, you also have it over here if you had one plugged in. So you got a little extra length there. Uh, they seem to give you a little bit of extra length on everything. I pulled some of this more into the cab as well. Uh, pulled as much as I could here to still be able to get to the grounds that will go to the head. And then over here you guys can see um, on Holly they end up giving you a fuel sensor plug that's compatible with like your 0 to 100 psi sensor it's not like a stock fuel pressure sensor or anything the wiring right here kind of gets a little tight and iffy at best because all this is designed to run up here to like a stock LS intake because that's what they designed these around is a stock LS intake so when you go tall here it kind of gets a little tight on like the coolant temp sensor but it's not bad not real tight it's just this little junction's kind of kind of ugly it probably adds some more tape back to it because like your intake air temp sensor is usually clear up here in an intake tube your idle air control is usually way up here on the throttle body so a lot of these wires are meant to actually keep running forward and plugging in um some people they'll rework a holly harness where they will cut it back out of the harness bring it back and then re-exit it um, I could do that. I might end up doing that. I don't know. I don't really like shortening up wires and trying to repin all the stock style connectors. Um, maybe one day, but for right now, this is going to at least work. Make sure everything's good. I also don't want to cut up a harness since you know it's warrantied. Holly, if there's something wrong with it, they'll take care of it and all that. So I'm just going to try to leave it. I'll probably, like I said, come back in here with maybe a little bit of tape. Uh, as you guys can see, like I could make a little slit here and free this wire up a little bit, then re tape it. So I, I might do some little stuff here just to help direct the wires a little bit better. It's in there. All that stuff is hooked up. This side is all hooked up. And then you got your ignition coils. So everything's looking pretty good on the outside. Everything else will pretty much be taken care of on the inside other than, like I said, hooking these to the head and this to the um, crank sensor. And they have the shielded wire here. So all the heat, because it actually wraps right along there, right along the block and plugs right into the crank sensor underneath the engine. I cannot believe how close the starter fits to the K member. Barely, barely fits. I had to actually start with the bolt that's underneath the A arm right here. The rest of the harness is in the truck here. Uh, these are the main ECU plugs. And I got all the little random wires that need to hook up to like ignition, uh, fuel pump. I think this might be tack if it's like the HP harness. Uh, and then there's the big power wire. So I'm going to build some sort of little panel over in here. And I'm thinking that I might be able to uh, mount the ECU right here, and then the plugs will come up, plug into it. Uh, the ECU has some LEDs on it, which I don't know really what they're for. I think it's mostly troubleshooting stuff. But if you ever needed to look at it, that's a nice thing. Don't sneeze too hard. It might fall off. But uh, if the ECU is right there. Really easy to get to, easy to unplug, easy to mess with. All right, everyone, so that will be part one of wiring Bernie the burnout truck. If you want to see part two and more wiring on hooking up this Terminator and wiring the whole truck, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.